Hey everyone, this is Crew Dog again. How's everybody doing today? I hope everybody's doing well. What I'm going to show you today, okay, is the Kodak C813 8.2 megapixel digital camera. Okay, this one here, it's a nice little camera uh, for everyday usage. It can be used as a first camera you know, for a young person. And it can be used for all ages, all the way up, even through senior citizen. Good camera. All right, let me start off here. A lot of people, I want to say young people today, might not know about what Kodak used to do. Okay, Kodak, Eastman Kodak Company, was just about the originators and founders of the modern day camera. They were the innovators. They started cameras off using film cameras. Used to have the, I remember the old box cameras when I was young. A lot of you weren't even born yet. But they had the box cameras. They had what they called the 126 uh, camera. They had the cartridge camera, the first cartridges, the 126 cartridge and the 110 cartridges. Like we used to call them Instamatics. You put it in there, put you, you just click, 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 and there you go. The old type, you had an old, you had a, like a reel spool, and you put it in, you had to stretch the film across the back of the camera onto a pickup spool. Then you had to wind it up, and you had to forward this as you took a picture. You had to go forward to the next set and the next set. Well, then came the world of digital cameras, and Kodak did not get on board quick enough. Other ones, such as Sony, they're the ones that really took off, and the Japanese builders took off really big time with the digital cameras. They left Kodak in the background. A lot of younger people, a lot of uh, professionals also, started going toward digital pictures. Kodak, again, did not do that until it was almost too late. Uh, once they did okay, they made cameras to where they were uh, financially within reach of the average person. That was the whole thing behind Kodak also. A lot of the cameras you get from the other, like Sony and Panasonic like that, uh, were costing anywhere like $500,000. But you can get a, a Kodak camera, like, you know, back then, like for $10, 15 $30. It came to digital, and they tried to do the same thing. They tried to keep the cameras within the reach of the average person, which they did. But the quality wasn't there. Because, you know, you get a $1,000 camera, it's going to take, you know, you know, beautiful pictures. And you get a, you know, a, a lower line camera, such as this one you're looking at right here. And it, it's a good picture, okay, for everyday usage. But you want to get a little bit more into that. Like you want to take pictures of a family portrait, you know, by, by the fireplace with a timer. It just doesn't, it didn't come out as well. So, they got behind the power curve. And as we all know now, Eastman Kodak is no more. They went out of business as far as digital cameras go. They are still there as Kodak, but they're Kodak imaging now. to where they do basically uh, film and x-rays film like that. But they don't make cameras anymore, like digital cameras. So, if you have a Kodak camera, it was made before they went out of business. They don't make them anymore at all. So, even looking online, like through eBay, whatever it is, you don't find anything new. Anyway, I hope I'm not boring you. Probably am. But still, this plate right here, okay, sat on top of what they used to call a docking station. And then, you see a little port right there, okay, to where it's an empty port that lines up with electrical connector on the bottom. Right there. Yep. It plugs in, and then you would use the red button there, point, and then that would send, you know, the, uh, the share button that would go down to the docking station. The docking station, okay, you could print pictures right there without having to go to a computer. You just set it on top there, press that, and you can select which picture you wanted to have by in the viewfinder, and then push that button, 
and next thing you know there's a picture printing out right there so that was the whole idea behind the docking station good idea uh, it just it was it, it was too little too late all right Kodak also okay for the longest time had the same configuration on the back top button is delete the one right here, okay, with like the little square and the round with the eye in it. That's when you have the LCD screen on. You can, uh, basically, you can remove off all the uh, information that's on there. You can go to uh, alignment grid, and I'll show you those. And you can go back to the regular display again. Menu is just that. You set it up, you go into the menu, and you can do all your first, when you first set things up. Review button is just that. You can push that and then you can see what how many we'll see the pictures you've got, which might be stored on the internal memory or on the external SD card or a combination of both. Up on top, you got two buttons, a power button on off, and you have your little uh, flash button up right there. Toggle switch, you can select your different modes. You can go into camera into video mode automatic which is just that it sets everything up for you image stabilization it keeps like the you know the movements and everything else it keeps that from blurring when you take a picture the little flowers for close-up and scenes you can select which ones you have and i'll show you a little bit about that too let's go ahead and turn it on There we go. There we go. Hold it on an angle here so you can see what's going on. Let's do this again. There you go. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Up on top on the left there, okay, like little eyeball. That right there, okay, is for the flash mode, which is for the red eye. When you take a picture, that one flashes like two or three times. It pulses. And that helps eliminate the red eyes when you take a picture of somebody, okay? It's just, it sets it up with the pupil and the iris and all kinds of neat things. The little circle right there with the, with the uh, line through it means the flash is turned off. A is the automatic mode where it sets up where it's going to take a picture automatically. And then the only with lightning bolt by itself is the forced mode. Now it's back, it's back to red eye, off, automatic mode. 8.1 is the megapixel setting. You can set that. Right now, okay, you've got nine pictures that are in there. You can take pictures on the internal memory. If you go to the menu mode and you go down to the 8.1, you can go all the way down if you wanted to, down to the 1.2 megapixel, which is very, very small. But if you do that, you change it now, there's 48 pictures can go on there because it's not as, not as much compressed. You can put more onto your memory. Only thing is, the pictures come out smaller and you cannot blow them up. If you do blow them up, you're going to get a lot of uh, distortion or pixelization or piling, as they call it. So we'll put it back into the 8.1 mode. That way right there, okay, when you take a really good picture, you can do that. While I'm in here, okay, we'll do this. That's the timer. You can set the timer, okay, for 2 seconds, 10 seconds off. Two shot, okay, is just that. Where you shoot it, it's going to take two shots instantaneously. Poof, poof. So you have two of them at the same time. Exposure compensation. You can do that, and you can move it up, or you can move it down. And that helps to set up, like, for... Uh, too light, too dark for the lighting mode in it that we already know about. White balance, automatic. You can set this okay for daylight, tungsten, fluorescent lighting, open shade. Okay. Auto mode is the best way to do it, though. So it automatically compensates and does it for it. Exposure metering. You can do it for multi-pattern. And this is where, when it focuses on, it focuses on okay to different subjects that are in there. This only goes in the center and you only get a spot in the middle. So I always leave it on the multi-pattern. ISO is just that. ISO speed. 
It's like uh, the ISO speed, okay, is for 400, 200, 180. The higher the number, okay, uh, the longer the lens is going to be staying open. So it depends upon where you want to be at. If you're in a darker area, lighter area. Leave it on the auto. It takes care of itself without worrying about it. Multi-zone again. And this is in the uh, AF is auto focus or center zone only. I leave mine on the multi-zone. Color. You can choose color, black and white, and Sophia. What that is, okay, is it turns everything like the old antiquing type of a color. You know, get that, that an antique look to it. If you wanted to do that. I like to keep it on the auto mode. Or, I'm sorry, on the color mode. Get back there again. It's on a, like a white or a, like a, I don't know what color. It's a cream color I'm on right now. This is the, the tabletop here. Okay. You can set an album in there, still album. You can make albums up. In your memory. Image storage, auto. Right now, okay, there's no memory card in there. So it's going to be storing automatically on the internal memory. If you have the auto mode, if you have an SD card in there, it's going to select. If you have the SD card, it's going to automatically store on the on the external memory card. Excuse me, I just did a a thing there. Okay. And you want to continue on, yes, because you don't want to do any formatting. Setup menu. This is where you can do do all your settings. You can change the camera sounds. High power is to where the LCD brightness on it. You can do that. Power save, it comes a little bit a little bit lighter, so it saves the L C D screen from uh, burning itself out pretty prematurely. Keep on going here. Here we go. Set up mode again. Auto off power. Auto power off mode. You can set it to where it's within ten minutes, five minutes, three minutes, one minutes. Where to automatically turn it, turn the power off on you. The calendar. You can set up the date here. You can set that up. Easy to do. Date stamp as to where you take a picture, and when you do. You're going to have that date in the lower right corner so you know when you took it. You can have that turned off. You can have it turned on. Right now, okay, i got to set it in the month, day, and year mode. You can change that to year, month, and day. Or you can do it military style. You can do it day, month, and year. Blur warning. i got it on right now. That's in case it does start to blur on you. It will automatically pop up saying, you know, hey, it, it might be blurring. Be careful. Language is English. That's why I speak the best sometimes. Format is just that, okay? You hit that format button, whatever's on the memory or on the, on the uh, SD card. If you do that, it's going to erase it all. Information, and you go back to the very beginning again. You get out of here, hit the menu button again, and you're out. Okay. The review button is just that. That's a picture I took of a table earlier, remember? I did it for a reason. I got that. Hit the delete button on top. Then you want to delete that. Yes, go to the picture. Delete it. Notice, okay, it says undo delete. You can do that, and it brings it right back up again. But if you do that, okay, and then you exit out by hitting the same button again, review button, and you go back in here again, it's all gone. And once you do that, okay, you've erased the memory. It's no longer holding it. And you can never bring it back again. It's gone. So that, my friends, is the C813 8.2 megapixel Kodak digital camera. That's kind of a quick demonstration, but I think it shows the camera itself. Good looking camera. Uh, like I said, okay, easy to use. Docking station. You got this portion. Uh, you can still find docking stations on eBay. They don't make them anymore, of course, but you can find them on there. If you do find one, uh, the film packs are really hard to get nowadays. They are manufactured still by uh, companies over in, I think it's China and Japan. But if you like them, you can do it with the new 
uh, printers out today, you don't really need to do that because you can just use your USB cable, plug it into your computer, and this just plugs in on the side over here on your USB port. That just plugs in right there. Mm, don't miss through a lens, it's not easy to do. There you go. Plug in your computer, you got it. You can do it, turn your printer on. Most printers nowadays, new printers, you can print both pictures and regular prints. So you can just do it right through your printer. So, on the crew dog scale of 1 to 10, I'm sorry, 1 to 5, 5 being the best, 1 being the worst, as far as this camera goes, okay, for usability, portability, convenience, uh, overall, I'm going to give it a 3. Uh, as you all know from watching my videos that I have on there, I'm in search of the perfect, the perfect point and shoot camera. I don't believe in spending hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars on the camera. I don't believe in that. Some of the newer compact and point and shoot cameras today, like the one that I'm using to video this with, uh, you can get almost the same quality as you can out of a $500, $1,000 camera. Now, if you're going to be going out with, a, you, know, you want like a 100 power zoom, so you can take a picture of something like, you know, 100, you know, 500 yards away, that's a different story. That's a whole different camera. But for the, what I use it for, okay, is for close-up makeography and just for regular everyday shoots. Uh, I've got a camera, I've showed it before, is that GE that can get 48 zoom out of a, out a point and shoot camera. That's pretty good. So this camera here, okay, the Kodak C8, 8, uh, C813, I'm going to give it a three star. As far as the perfect camera, I'm going to give it a two star. If you're looking for a camera, though, which is good, you can find one of these on eBay. Amazon, wherever you want to go to, okay, they run for a good one in really, really, really good shape. Like this one here is in really good shape. There's not one scratch on this camera, not one. And everything on it works. You can find one of these on eBay for, they're at, we're going for around 70 bucks. Uh, I don't charge that much for it. Mine go for, you know, 50 but you can find them anywhere from, from $35, $25 for ones that are, you know, that are, you know, they, they work, but they, they don't look very good. You know, they're not in very good shape. Up to $125. Bucks. That's what people sell them for. They never get it, but that's what they ask for it. So that is the C813 camera. I do hope that you liked it. I like showing it to you. And that's about it. So to all you out there on YouTube, this is the Crew Dog saying, if you have any questions, you know that you can post them on there. I always answer. It might, might take me a while sometimes, but I always answer. I did a couple of my video responses the other day. So if you ask for a video response, like, you know, hey, can you show this to me again? Can you point this out? Can you do this? I'll do it if I still have that product. Most of the cameras that I've already shown on, on YouTube, they're, I've already sold them. They're already gone. Uh, a lot of the, I have phones on there from track phone. Uh, most of those phones I've either got rid of or I've upgraded or I just don't like them anymore. And I get something else. I mean, the, the, they're, they're, they're so, so cheap, you know, you can buy another one. So this is the crew dog saying, thank you for watching. Please watch my ads. And this is crew dog saying until next time. Ow!